Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Greenomics World uh, Studio. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, about uh, bioenergy in uh, Ukraine and uh, current investments and uh, uh, what are the opportunities in, in coming days. And uh, today we are very fortunate to have uh, Jarji Guletukha with us. He is the head of uh, bioenergy association of uh, Ukraine uh, currently based out of in Ukraine. So he will, uh, today we'll have a complete discussion on the biomass energy market in uh, Ukraine. Uh, what are the, you know, production targets in terms of uh, renewable energy and uh, how biomass can be really uh, beneficial and what are the government plans and targets uh, uh, set uh, for the next five to 10 years uh, timeline. Like uh, then what are the challenges and what are the current market potential uh, in Ukraine? And uh, what are the investors should look uh, uh, for uh, in terms of technology, in terms of uh, adopters, adaptation of new technology and uh, uh, what are the barriers they need to know. So today Georgie will help us uh, putting some information on, and details about the Ukrainian market and uh, uh, that is, uh, that is what we will be discussing. And after that uh, presentation from the Georgie, we will have a complete uh, question and answer session. So welcome everyone to the Greenomics World webinar. Uh, and uh, uh, so we have our approximately uh, 57 uh, participants uh, who are now currently uh, viewing this uh, Greenomics World webinar across the uh, world, but more specifically from Ukraine, this time being this is uh, uh, a bioenergy uh, discussion forum for the Ukrainian market. So. Uh, welcome everyone and uh, welcome Jarji to the Greenomics World uh, webinar. Jarji, can you uh, hear me? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, so uh, that's nice. Yeah. So uh, today we are uh, so we have our guest speaker uh, from Bioenergy Association of Ukraine. Uh, he is going to give a complete details of the bioenergy industry in Ukraine and uh, what are the current updates and uh, what are the investment opportunities uh, for the market. So uh, just before we start, uh, we'll just uh, uh, ask Georgie to uh, share his presentation here uh, now and uh, he and I'll ask him to continue from here about the presentation he's having. Hello everybody, my name is uh, Georgi Gelitucha. I am uh, head of the board of uh, Bioenergy Association of Ukraine. It's uh, my pleasure to present you uh, last uh, uh, events in the uh, bioenergy sector in Ukraine and uh, thank you for opportunity to speak uh, on uh, this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, next slide please. Uh, and uh, we are a profile association established about five years ago, especially uh, to lobby uh, bioenergy development in Ukraine. At the moment, we have uh, 20 plus uh, companies uh, in the association, uh, and uh, additionally, uh, 10 plus uh, uh, experts uh, joining uh, our association. Next slide, please. Next. Okay. And uh, uh, this is a general picture of uh, renewable energy uh, sector development uh, in Ukraine. And uh, you see the uh, last figure of our statistics uh, correspond to 2016. And uh, Ukraine has only 5.8% of renewable in total final energy consumption of Ukraine. And you see uh, dynamic is, uh, is improved last two years, then uh, between 2016, 15, 16, approximately 1% per year we add in renewables. And uh, this uh, upper picture is a division in which, uh, in which subsectors uh, we use renewables. Upper line is a power generation from renewables. Uh, you see its uh, figure is uh, almost 8%, but uh, 
dynamic is not so high that uh, you see more or less the same figure last uh, three years. <coughs> this red line is a hit, hit production uh, from Ukraine, uh, from uh, renewables, and you see the biggest progress in this hit production area. And green line is a transport. Transport is also near stagnation and no, no visible growth. Then we can conclude that uh, all, uh, practically all uh, growth of renewable energy in Ukraine uh, corresponds to growth of heat from renewables uh, production. That our mostly developed sec mostly developing sector is a heat production from renewables. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Okay, this is also uh, statistics. Uh, okay, this one. This is also statistics uh, from our energy balances and. Uh, uh, starting from 2010, and uh, last energy balance published uh, for 2016. And this uh, uh, blue line is uh, dots from this energy balance, uh, which is indicating uh, total supply of primary energy from biofuel and waste. And you can see these dots in uh, uh, million ton of oil equivalent, and you can see that during this uh, six last years, these dots grow from about one million ton of oil equivalent till 2.8 million ton of oil equivalent. And average growth is 35% uh, per year. And we expect similar, similar trend for, for nearest uh, future. Then uh, we can conclude from this slide that bioenergy is in principle in good dynamic in Ukraine, plus 35% each year. It's uh, uh, in comparison with other sectors of our economy is, is one of the faster uh, growing sector. Uh, maybe only agriculture is a more or less competitors and with a similar uh, rate of uh, increase. Next slide. Next, yeah, uh, this is a slide from our new uh, energy strategy, which is uh, approved by government uh, at the end of 2017. Um, and uh, you see uh, the, the main balances uh, of energy uh, for now and uh, for, 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 for future, uh, in particular for 2035. And uh, you see a uh, red color uh, uh, marked uh, biomass, biofuels <coughs> and uh, weight. And uh, at the moment, uh, or in 2015, uh, input of uh, biomass and biofuels was 2.1 million ton of oil equivalent. And for 2035, prognosis is 11 uh, million ton of oil equivalent. Growth more than five times uh, for nearest 20 years. Then, um, you can see also uh, coal sector, for example. At the moment is uh, 27 million ton of oil equivalent, but for future it's uh, 12. Then uh, we see two processes in Ukraine. Uh, decreasing of uh, coal um, consumption and in, and in parallel more or less the same increase of biomass for energy consumption. And you see in 2035, share of coal and biomass will be more or less equal. And uh, the second uh, uh, conclusion from this slide, that biomass in 2035, at the moment, is uh, about 80% of all renewables in Ukraine. You see figure for solar and hydro, and uh, they are much lower than for uh, biomass and biofuels. Uh, situation will will be uh, 
more or less uh, synchronized in 2035, but biomass uh, input will be equal to other renewables input in Ukraine. Solar, wind and hydro together will be equal to biomass and biofuels uh, input. Then uh, biomass is very important sector for, for Ukraine at the moment already and uh, it will be even much more important in the future. It will be like our, sec uh, like our current coal sector. Uh, biomass will, will, will play more or less the same role in, in the future. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, calculation. What kind of uh, uh, biomass and biofuels uh, we will use? If you see uh, the current uh, situation, it's about 90% of woody biomass. Uh, this is uh, wood, uh, wood logs, uh, uh, wood chips, uh, wood pellets, uh, different kind of uh, wood. Uh, and about 10%, uh, this is specific Ukrainian agricultural residues, sunflower husk. Uh, Ukraine is uh, quite, uh, uh, quite leading country in the world in the harvesting of uh, sunflower. We are, we are number one in the world producer of sunflower oil. And this uh, sunflower husk is a byproduct of uh, this uh, industry and uh, we use uh, it uh, quite actively already and will uh, and the level of utilization of sunflower husk more or less 90 percent already that we we already utilize practically all sunflower husk which is uh, generating in in ukraine but for future for 2035 picture will be quite different. You see slow growth of uh, woody biomass, that it's like 30% uh, plus from current situation. The reason we are not really woody country, uh, that uh, only 15% territory covered by forest, and uh, this uh, figure is a, is a maximum, what we can use uh, uh, woody biomass as a fuel and uh, practically all other territory used for agriculture that we are very agricultural country and you see this yellow uh, yellow um, chart is a different kind of uh, agricultural residues like a straw like uh, corn stems sunflower husk, sunflower stems, and different kind of agricultural diseases. And uh, we also seriously thinking about uh, uh, specially harvested biomass, like energy crops. Uh, we started do this already. Uh, at the moment, we harvested about uh, 6,000 uh, uh, hectares of uh, energy crops. First of all, uh, willow, poplar, miscanthus, uh, and uh, this kind of uh, energy crops. And uh, we plan to do this much more in the future. In the Ukrainian uh, situation, uh, we have uh, 32 million hectares of agricultural land. And from this 32, we use uh, at the moment uh, 28 that uh, last uh, 20 and more years, we don't use about 4 million hectares of agricultural land. We don't need uh, uh, agricultural product from this land. And it's quite logically if we will use part of this land for energy crops. Then uh, we have this uh, reserve of uh, free agricultural land, which can be used for harvesting of uh, energy crops without competition with, uh, with uh, uh, food production. Uh, then our estimations and in 2035, uh, we easy can uh, uh, generate this uh, 10 million ton of oil equivalent from biomass. And this is a 
distribution uh, of this figure between uh, different kind of biomass. But the conclusion that uh, uh, two thirds of our biomass in the future will be from agriculture. It will be agricultural residuals or it will be specially harvested uh, energy crops. Next slide, please. Okay, and this is uh, some figures uh, where we are now and uh, where we are going uh, in the future. In 2016, for example, um, our utilization of biomass equal 2.8 million ton of oil equivalent. Uh, in, the in the natural gas consumption, it's equivalent 3.5 billion cubic meters of gas. At the moment, it's about 12% of natural gas consumption in Ukraine. It means that uh, we already replaced 12% of natural gas consumption in Ukraine by biomass. And uh, for example, if we will not use this biomass, we need additionally 3.5 billion cubic of, uh, of uh, natural gas per year, which is quite a big figure and which is quite costly. And uh, uh, this uh, equipment which we use uh, to produce energy from biomass at the moment uh, costs about 1 billion euro that we already invested in this sector about 1 billion euro and this sector generated at the moment about 13,000 new jobs. Uh, and the similar figure is presented for future and uh, especially, yeah, and uh, this figure corresponds to governmental document. For example, for 2020, this figure corresponds to National Renewable Energy Action Plan, which is uh, approved by government. And the target of this plan to reach 12% of renewables uh, in 2020. And uh, it will uh, correspond to uh, uh, 3.6 million ton of oil equivalent. Yeah. And it will generate, it will double practically uh, new jobs. And uh, at the moment, we have good chances to reach target of this uh, uh, renewable energy action plan in the heat sector. We are a little bit uh, uh, postponed in the electricity. We are quite far from target in the transport, but uh, we are we are more or less. Uh, in the line of this uh, action plan in the heat sector. That uh, I am optimistic that 12% uh, uh, of renewable in the heat sector we will reach in 2020. And then uh, we have figures from uh, our energy strategy till 2035. Uh, the main target to reach 30% of renewable heat in 2030 and 40% of renewable heat in 2035. Then it's quite ambition, ambition uh, targets. Uh, and uh, to reach this 40% uh, of renewable heat for Ukrainian conditions, it, uh, in energy, it's uh, practically 10 million ton of oil equivalent we should use. Uh, and uh, it will generate practically 100,000 new jobs. And uh, total investment will be uh, about 8 billion euro to reach uh, this uh, target. Then you see um, that uh, figure is quite ambitious. And uh, what is uh, important is this figure is is approved by government and uh, we are uh, we are moving in 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 this direction at the moment next slide please okay and this is uh, about uh, uh, distribution where we use this heat which we are speaking uh, 
At the moment, um, uh, about half of this uh, renewable heat is uh, in the private houses, where population using biomass, mostly biomass, in uh, private uh, 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 individual boilers. And uh, about half is uh, in the industry, where industry actively use uh, their uh, biomass residues. First of all, it's uh, forestry, uh, um, forestry treatment um, uh, enterprises, um, it's uh, wood processing enterprises, uh, some flower oil producers, they actively use uh, byproduct of uh, biomass uh, for energy. And for future, you see one more sector we expect that will uh, input a lot. This is a district heating uh, system, uh, a green one on this table. And then um, we have uh, quite developed district heating systems in Ukraine. Uh, at the moment, it's about uh, 50 and mo 50 with something percent our district heating systems from total heat systems in Ukraine. And uh, district heating used biomass at the moment, uh, it, very limited figure, but in the future it will be one of the uh, main consumer. That uh, together these sectors, private population, industry plus district heating uh, system will consume uh, uh, this uh, about 10 million ton of uh, oil equivalent uh, biofuels and will generate about 40% renewable heat in Ukraine in 2035. Next slide, please. Okay, this is uh, potential of uh, biomass available for energy in Ukraine you see a uh, different uh, kind of biomass which is uh, uh, available in Ukraine. The biggest uh, share is different kind of uh, agricultural residues like a straw, stems, uh, sunflower husk, what I mentioned before. Uh, this is a physical tone of uh, these uh, residues. And the second column, which share we plan to use for energy. For example, for straw, we plan to use only 30% of straw for energy and 70% uh, uh, for agricultural uh, purposes like, uh, um, like digging in the soil for fertilization. And for other uh, agricultural residues, it's, this figure is 40%. Then even with this 30 and 40%, you see a share of uh, agricultural residues in million ton of oil equivalent. Um, it's quite high and uh, corresponds uh, about 42% of to total biomass in Ukraine. And uh, the second big share is uh, energy crops, uh, which we can harvest in uh, our free agricultural land. Uh, in these slide scenarios uh, where we use 1 million uh, hectare of uh, uh, free agricultural land for willow poplar miscanthus harvesting, uh, uh, which will be used as a fuel in the boilers, and 1 million hectare for corn for uh, production of uh, silage uh, for biogas. And with this uh, 1 plus 1 million hectares, we have additionally this 28% uh, of our uh, resources of uh, biofuel. And altogether, we, we consider our resources is 21 million oil equivalent, and uh, Ukraine consume about 90 million ton of oil equivalent. That it's uh, about 25% of total need uh, of Ukraine is, uh, is available as a biomass uh, resources. Next slide, please. Next uh, slide, please. Okay. This is uh, some uh, feasibility uh, parameters. And then if uh, we install 10 megawatt boiler, using wood chips or baled maize stalks in district heating, 
uh, it is indicated typical uh, fuel cost, typical investment, and typical uh, uh, internal rate of return and payback period. You see, project is quite profitable in current uh, Ukrainian conditions with uh, IRR twenty eight percent, which is quite interesting to 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 investors. Similar figure is for CHP. If you produce, if you construct a combined hidden power plant producing electricity plus heat from the same fuel, six megawatt electrical plus eighteen megawatt thermal. Um, figures is on the slide, and the IRR is twenty three percent, which is also interesting and payback a little bit more than four years, which is which is interesting for investors. And the only power station, six megawatt electrical, is uh, worse in this indi in these economical indicators with IRR uh, thirteen percent. Then uh, we are recommending if you invest in uh, 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 biomass uh, projects in Ukraine, uh, we recommend uh, as a priority is a CHP option uh, and only heat option. That only electricity option is uh, not the best from economical point of view. Next slide. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this is uh, a little bit about uh, main drivers and barriers for bioenergy production in Ukraine. Uh, the main drivers uh, is uh, is uh, some, some some drivers. Uh, the first is a market prices for natural gas for industry and public organization. Uh, for example, uh, three, four years ago, we have quite different gas prices for different consumers. For industry, it was already market prices, but for population, for district heating companies, um, these prices were five, six times cheaper than prices for industry. And, of course, it, it uh, killed interest to replace this gas in the sector of population and district heating because of uh, this low price. From May 2016, it was uh, a high increase of gas prices for population and district heating companies, and now they less than for industry, but only 40%, 40% less of, uh, than prices in industry. And of course, uh, it's absolutely different situation. It's much more uh, cost, much more effective, much more economical uh, to replace this uh, gas by biomass in current conditions. Uh, next, uh, uh, last year, Ukraine changed uh, system uh, of installation of tariffs uh, on the heat energy produced from biomass. At the moment, uh, uh, it's a fixed uh, tariff equal uh, to heat uh, tariff from the gas minus 10%. That it's very simple uh, principle, very simple formula. And the, each investor know in advance which tariff from the heat he will receive and this tariff is uh, is uh, covering uh, uh, his inv his investments and uh, providing him uh, return on investments on the level which I uh, showed before, and uh, also uh, also uh, it's uh, some improvements in uh, other uh, legislation. Uh, like uh, first step of monetization of subsidies in, in Ukraine. In Ukraine, uh, after this high increase of the gas prices, uh, part of population cannot pay these high prices and government subsidizing this population and uh, paying them subsidies. But before this year, the subsidies was not in the, not in the money form. And uh, from January 2018, 
this uh, subsidy is monetized. And uh, now producer of uh, heat, uh, which is providing to, to many floor buildings uh, with uh, part of uh, population which is using the subsidies, can receive real money for provided heat. Then this is a good improvement uh, and uh, uh, removing one of the barriers. Uh, unfortunately, we have some barriers yet, which is not removed, like uh, this 40% uh, difference in the prices uh, and uh, for population and for industry. But at the moment, the Ukraine in, in the process of negotiations with the International Monetary Fund Ukraine is interested to receive a new tranche from uh, this uh, IMF uh, uh, organization and one of the requests to synchronize these uh, prices for population and for industry. And uh, now we are waiting first uh, September of this year and uh, it's likely that from 1st September these gas prices will be more or less equalized and this barrier will be removed. Uh, we see as a barrier a lack of market instrument for biofuel trade. Uh, we have more and more boilers, we have more and more CHPs on uh, biomass, and it's uh, sometimes it's difficult to buy biomass uh, due to absence of this uh, market instrument that we are working now in association uh, on the development of biofuel exchange, the play where main sellers of biomass and main buyers of biomass, biofuels, will meet each other and will, uh, will find uh, needed volume and needed prices of uh, biofuels. Uh, at the moment, this draft law is prepared and we think that this year we will see this law in the parliament and uh, it will be accepted at least in the first reading and somewhere in 2019 we have good chances to uh, launch this uh, biofuel exchange in Ukraine and it will help to all boilers, CHP, power station, to buy needed volume of biofuel. And also we are working on improvement of model for our district heating companies. Because at the moment it's uh, more, or more or less uh, monopoly type of uh, companies. In, the, in one uh, city it's one uh, company working. And typically it's a conflict of interest for them to connect independent producer of heat uh, from biomass to the existing uh, heat networks and uh, to simplify, to uh, provide this uh, transparent and not discriminating uh, rules of connection for these independent producers of heat to uh, existing heat networks. We also need to improve legislation and we are working on this. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Then my conclusion is quite, quite uh, optimistic. Uh, Ukraine is uh, in good movement in the sector of bioenergy. Um, in general, 35% per year uh, increase rate uh, of uh, development of bioenergy, mostly in the heat sector production. And uh, we already invested a billion uh, euro in this, uh, in this uh, equipment. And the niche for investment is up to 8 billion euro to, to this equipment to reach uh, installed by government targets for 2035 and uh, we have uh, full open and uh, economically feasible uh, projects in the heat production from biomass for private houses, 
heat production for biomass for public, industrial and commercial consumers, power production from biomass uh, uh, with CH as a more feasible option. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, here is um, information about uh, our September conference on biomass for energy, 25, 26 September in Kiev. We will discuss all questions uh, concerning uh, bioenergy development in Ukraine. Uh, typically 200 participants uh, uh, in participating in uh, this uh, conference with a big share of uh, foreigners uh, with a simultaneous translation to English. Uh, welcome to, to this conference. And I think my next, my last slide is, is the next. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Welcome to Ukraine and to UABO, which is the Ukrainian Bioenergy Association. <coughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you uh, for this uh, great insight on the European uh, Ukrainian market uh, today. And uh, as you have uh, a lot of questions for you, uh, there are uh, people from different different countries who are interested uh, to, for the Ukrainian market. Uh, they have asked you questions, which I will be putting to you. Uh, uh, this is uh, Halim Badri. He is from uh, France and. Uh, he is asking uh, how cost effective is uh, biomass energy in, uh, uh, with compared to solar and other renewables and what are the latest technologies uh, in biomass energy that Ukraine is offer? There are two questions. Okay. Uh, I think the question about power, about electricity. Yeah. Then um, in Ukraine we have uh, special law uh, on uh, feeding tariffs or on green tariffs which is supporting production of electricity from renewables. Uh, according to current version of this law, uh, uh, we uh, guarantee uh, for solar energy, for big solar, for big capacity of solar, 15 euro cents per kilowatt hour till uh, 2030. And uh, taking into account that the uh, cost of uh, solar power is reducing each year, at the moment we have the most favorable conditions uh, in renewable electricity, this is a summer. Uh, because uh, tariff is high, uh, project is quite simple, uh, no need in the fuel, and guaranteed till 2030. And uh, last year we see that 80% of money in power generating sector from renewables uh, were sent, were spent to solar. That this is uh, the most growing sector uh, in the power generation. Uh, total in, total uh, uh, capacity of installed solar near 8 uh, 100 uh, megawatt electrical from solar and in comparison from biomass it's about uh, 40 on the biomass plus other 40 from the biogas then biomass and biogas much less than from solar and the, one of the reasons that uh, our feeding tariff uh, for biomass and biogas at the moment is 12.3 12.3 euro cents per kilowatt hour, much lower than for solar. Project is more complicated and we need fuel and this fuel costs money also. Then, 
answering your question, uh, winner in this competition between solar and uh, biomass in power generating sector, obviously solar. Uh, situation may be changed in near future because at the moment Ukraine discussing uh, changing of this feeding tariff system and uh, going to auctions from uh, January 2020. And these auctions will be obligatory for big solar and big wind. Uh, for solar, it's uh, more than five megawatt electrical. It's uh, obligatory go to the auctions, and only if you win auctions, you will receive tariff, and this tariff will be less than fixed now in the uh, feed-in tariff law. And uh, for wind, it will be ten megawatt electrical, and the same system. Biomass is not obligatory to uh, go to the auctions, and uh, will uh, continue uh, live in the current uh, system. Um, but the problem is that in 1st January 2020, uh, all uh, feeding tariffs will be reduced 10%, and for biomass and biogas, it's quite critical. That uh, at the moment, we don't see big investment in the power from biomass and biogas, and after this 10% reduction, be afraid full stop uh, in the current rules. Then that's why our association uh, started discussion with government. We developed a proposition not to reduce this 10% in 2020, even increase some, uh, some feeding tariff for uh, middle capacity and for small capacity. The 12 is more or less okay for big capacity, but not for middle and small. And uh, we also proposed uh, uh, the, uh, to postpone this uh, term of guarantee. Now it's 2030, which is quite close, uh, and investors is not, uh, not safety with this uh, 2030 guarantee. And uh, we are uh, asking the same approach as discussing under auctions, 20-year PP, guaranteed PPA, that uh, if you uh, signed uh, a PPA, it will be for 20 years, not till 2030. And now all this uh, uh, under discussion um, in the parliament, in the government, and idea to finish this discussion somewhere in September, and in September develop one uh, um, aggregating uh, draft law with uh, all uh, developed uh, uh, propositions, and we hope that uh, part of at least part of our propositions for biomass and bioenergy will be taken into consideration duration and will find place in this uh, final text of the law. Then the uh, situation may be quite different. And absolutely different situation in the heat sector. In the heat sector, biomass is very successful, what I demonstrated in my presentation. We don't need any subsidies here, we don't need to uh, a special feeding tariff for heat or something like this. We work cheaper than the heat, than the heat from the natural gas. Uh, at the moment, this uh, system minus 10% from the tariff from the gas. And even with this minus 10%, we are competitive and uh, interesting for investment, investments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there is this another question from uh, Amir Mustafa from uh, Morocco. So he is asking why there is a, a sudden increase in straws and sudden reduction in wood uh, biomass. Is there a plan to increase the agricultural activities in the near future in Ukraine? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, agricultural sector in Ukraine uh, is under very good development. Uh, one one example in uh, Soviet time, yeah, in uh, it's more than twenty five years ago, our best uh, uh, 
harvest uh, of grain in Ukraine was on the level 20 million ton. Ukraine, it's one of the best uh, uh, for the history of Ukraine in the, as a part of Soviet Union. But last year, for example, our harvest of grain in Ukraine was 64 million ton. It's three times more than in Soviet times. And uh, our agricultural export...